Is anyone else as confused as I am lately when it comes to impact torque figures? You got traditional working and max torque, breakaway torque, bolt breakaway, hex breakaway, nut busting torque, deliverable torque, flubs of torque. There's no standard for testing in the power tools world. As far as testing our tools, we have our test centers, competitors have their test centers, and due to the fact that there is no standard, it's difficult to get an apples to apples or one-to-one -one comparison between our tools, competitors' tools, any tools in general. Uh, let's give it a shot. This is the Torque Test Channel. Here we're going to try to make sense of the marketing when it comes to impact tools. First we're going to make an impact testing rig and that we're going to do here. If you want to skip right to the testing you can go to the timestamp at the bottom below. What we're looking at here is essentially some fancy bolts I picked up for pennies on the dollar. These are uh, MSC Bow alloy bolts. Uh, if you're familiar with grade 8 bolts, uh, they're stronger than that. They're essentially a grade 9 bolt that exceeds grade 9. So grade 8 is usually 150,000 PSI proof rating. Grade 9 is 180,000 PSI and these bow malloy bolts um, which as a set are something like $225 um, for a 10 piece set. I picked up for around $30 and these rated at 200,000 PSI. So these gave me the idea to perhaps make a machine um, that we can repeatedly test torque on in, in a way that won't wear down the bolt over time. Then essentially you got grade 9 nuts and washers here as well. What's a bit unique to this channel is we have a reverse thread version of these same bolts that are also 1 inch in 14 so that we can do the same test in reverse. Uh, fine threads are important in this case for an impact wrench giving it the most advantage possible had a friend make this out of uh, chromoly, heat treated to the same hardness as these bow alloy bolts, hopefully it provides a similar result. So here we have the last of the hardware which is a 1 inch by 2.5 inch steel bar and a 3 quarter inch 1045 steel plate. These two pieces sandwich two 20 ton Harbor Freight short body rams which are pretty cheap. I was originally going to connect them in the center as shown here with these uh, NPT pipe fittings and a gauge, but after some testing it turned out we'd be making much more than the 6,000 PSI the setup would limit to. In order to measure torque in a relatable way with real foot-pounds instead of some hard to understand PSI rating, we're going to need a reliable standard to base it off of. For us that's going to be this Ingersoll Rand 231H. For those of you who don't know, this is sort of the impact gun that brought us in the US into the modern age and really became the standard as a dependable, hard-hitting, hard-to-kill impact uh, model number that's now likely 30, 40 years old. This one in particular is a rarely used example from the early to mid 90s probably. You can see here it's still made in the USA. The tool is originally advertised at 450 foot-pounds of max torque and for decades no one's really questioned that. There's not been a reason to. The tool makes 450 if you bought an impact rated at 550 you expected it to hit harder than this original IR Thundergun. Because this comes from an era of pre-nut busting flubs or whatever you want to call it, its performance will be our standard here and we'll use its performance to calibrate and measure all other impacts against. We're using a 38 millimeter impact socket here because it fit tighter than a one and a half inch and we're using a deep because it adds more mass which can help each impact we test as well. In order to use this impact as our standard, we had to make sure it was in good condition. And while this one was pretty obviously gently used, uh, it was worth taking apart and going through the parts and seeing if anything needed to be replaced, which was a bit anxious for me because this was the quote-unquote made or assembled in the USA model. If anything needed to be replaced, I was going to have to source some 20 to 30 year old parts to, to make it apples to apples. Uh, luckily in this case, as you can see from the hammers, the hammer cage, anvil and even the rotor blades uh, this was a very very good example that just needed some grease and some oil and put back together to be in 
original working condition. Here we're indicating marks for the hardware on the 20 ton ramps, then drilling and tapping the holes and mounting it to the 3 quarter inch plate. The original 6,000 PSI fittings were replaced with 10,000 PSI hydraulic hoses and a quarter inch inner pack 10,000 PSI T. Uh, this ended up having a higher capacity than the original design. And then I bled it here of the air in the system, which ended up being pretty difficult, needed to make a reservoir to do this. This last piece is really what's going to make this channel happen. While the gauge itself costs more than the rest of the rig combined, it's a custom pressure gauge that's going to allow us to use custom units like pounds feet and a custom conversion factor based on the 231H's performance to display actual foot pounds on each test we do in real time. So if we're going to be testing torque, what kind of torque test do we do and why? And surely you want to avoid as much BS as possible. Well, since an old IR gun is going to be the standard on this channel, let's use some figures from back in the day, um, which is working a max torque. The guy at the beginning of this video said there's no industry standards and you would need to test all these different brands in the same room for an equal result. Well, there are a couple old school standards and we're going to test them all in the same room, so let's give that a shot. Remember, all the numbers will be based off the results of this 231H, so even if you disagree with the method, the numbers across all the models we eventually test will still remain true to this. Working Torque I found an old Skidmore Wilhelm brochure and used the Internet Wayback Machine to look at some old IR articles, and Working Torque was first used by Sioux Air Tools out of the U.S. as a five-second test. If you look at the Sioux Tools catalog, it says that this is done with a five second rundown, which means forward. Um, the same process is described by SP Air Tools out of Japan as well, so we'll use five seconds of forward impacting for working torque. The second test we're going to do is max torque. I found an article by IR from the mid 2000s where they describe this process, and there's also this video where they talk about max torque and then they show an impact being tested for 10 seconds on screen and they also show a 10 second timer being used and here the guns being used in reverse so we'll call 10 seconds in reverse max torque while other brands advertise up to 15 seconds for this process I'm pretty confident IR hasn't changed this process over the years so since we're using this 231H as the baseline I think it pairs well and we'll leave excessive impacting times for our next test the last test we're going to do will be called the torque test channel's best case scenario. This shouldn't be used to compare directly to any brand's numbers as their process is probably going to be different. But if their tool isn't hitting its highest advertised numbers with this test, you have to wonder how real life their numbers really can be. 
And before we talk about what this process will be, let's talk about air pressure for a second. Up till now, the tests we've been talking about are at 90 PSI dynamic pressure in the tool while it's running. So you may be thinking, okay, that's like 95 to 100 PSI at the wall then. But look here, this is with high flow fittings and a 25 foot hose. The wall's set to 112, which should be plenty, and only drops to 100 PSI at the wall. But look at the tool, while it's running, this is around 78 PSI. So you need a much higher static pressure to get to 90 PSI in the tool. With that in mind, in our best case scenario test, we're going to be using 15 seconds in reverse at 150 PSI static pressure, which like on the 90 PSI test, the static pressure will drop at least another 35 PSI or so while running. The reason for this specific type of test is one 15 seconds seems to be the max test length I keep seeing online. And we want to be able to compare this test first cordless tools we eventually test. So on a cordless tool, you would want to make sure that your battery is topped up if you're coming across a stubborn bolt. Well, same on an air tool. You're going to want to make sure your compressor is topped up and your regulator is set high if you're having trouble. After all, if your cordless impact had a turbo button, you would use it, so let's be fair. And three, lastly, a compressor that hits 150 PSI is both common and affordable for a home gamer nowadays. So first step is to lube up the bolt, washer, and nut with high pressure grease. Here's our digital gauge in its default setting which connects to a 10,000 PSI T in hydraulic lines to two 20 ton rams. Then the nuts held in place at the back with a wrench and we're going to be tightening down on these rams timed by this timer. But first we have to break the bolt in. Then clean off the bolt and nut and reapply the grease. Last step is calibrating the gauge. We're going to take a few readings based on max torque process, then average them out and input this data into the gauge so it can convert to foot-pounds based on this 231H's performance. Once we input this average into the gauge, we can finally test the 231H old-school impact and see actual foot-pounds. got a little excited here because the gun actually is supposed to be 450 and then we'd do the same process for forward working torque here. <laughs> 285 is a good reading here because the gun was originally rated at 300 foot-pounds working torque which is within 5%. If you're surprised that the gun is making 450 max torque and around 300 working torque at this point, then you probably haven't watched a lot of this video as this whole process is going to be based around this gun. So the calibration input into this gauge is made to represent this 231H USA old school impact wrench. And then every impact wrench we're going to be testing going forward will be based on how powerful this gun is. This last test is the 15 second one with the 20-25 PSI higher line pressure. This is going to be the one that will allow us to compare to electric and cordless impacts as well as maybe some marketing of modern times like nut busting and breakaway tour. So what have we learned? We've learned that the test rig itself is repeatable and reliable, which is mainly what we need from it. The accuracy itself is not coming from a bolt tension pounds PSI conversion scale. It's coming from this 231H being 450 foot-pounds. And if this is 450 foot-pounds, is the next impact we test one and a half times more powerful than this, half as powerful than this? That's going to be our scale, which is kind of, I think, more relatable to the average user rather than some formula that manufacturers use to, to put out numbers. And we also have a ceiling, which is like your best case scenario, what is it most likely ever going to produce for you? 
and hopefully we can compare that more directly with the best case numbers from other brands from here on out. If you want to subscribe, the next videos will be considerably shorter than this because I won't have to build the test machine each time. And they'll be more the meat and potatoes of this channel. They'll be the actual comparisons of impacts between each other and obviously impacts compared to the standard we've tested here.